Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you knew it was going to happen. Now, you can't see the smile on my face. Because I knew it was going to happen. I knew it would all catch up to them. I have one question to ask before we get into today's lesson. Where are all those people who always chimed in with the excuse, well, WWE is making all this money. They can't do no wrong. The product may suck, but look at how much money they're making. Get your pens and papers out. It's time for another edition of Vocabulary with JD. Today's word, and if you need to go back to lesson one where we covered the word delusional, that could still be WWE today. So you could use delusional and what I taught you there and apply it to here. But today we're going over the word and the definition of karma. Karma, ladies and gentlemen. You felt it. I felt it. It's real. What goes around comes around. You reap what you sow, etc., etc. The definition of karma is as follows. It is a noun in Hinduism and Buddhism. The sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence. Viewed as deciding their fate in future existences. Destiny or fate following as effect from cause. Now, how do we apply this to WWE? How do we apply this to Vince McMahon? What has happened in the news as of late that you could think WWE and karma in the same thought? WWE is walking a very, very, very dangerous line. They don't know the potential of bad that could come from all of this. And if they were smart, they would realize that their hunger and lust for money and nothing else than the almighty dollar may be the downfall of everything that they've built up in the last several years to tarnish a bad name that wrestling has attached to it and they may ruin all the clean image and family fun entertainment that they've built up over the last several years. It's not looking good. It is not looking good. WWE has taken money from the Saudi government and in one fell swoop, WWE could see everything that they have built up washed away with one murder of a Turkish journalist who apparently, I believe, wrote for the Washington Post. He was murdered. He was interrogated. He was tortured. He was killed. With a bone saw. And there's audio and video evidence of this. The FBI says that there's audio and video evidence of this. WWE, as of right now, is monitoring the situation. Of course they're monitoring the situation. Fox News was the first outlet to pick up this situation. So, of course, WWE is monitoring the situation. Because they're monitoring the mainstream attention that this is getting. This is bad news. Not only is this bad news for WWE, this could serve as something that is going to rile up the fan base. That There may be revolt with the fan base. It's already started. There's polling all over social media about WWE and fans wanting WWE to cancel Crown Jewel. You know? On top of that, not only the fans, their mainstream sponsors that WWE is in bed with. What if they pull out? What if WWE has the mainstream sponsors pull out and they say, fuck this shit. We don't want to be in bed with somebody who's going to support the Saudi government after what they did. And if WWE sponsors pull out, then 
WWE's going to have no choice but to pull out of this Saudi government deal, this big million dollar Saudi deal. They're going to have to. Because nobody's going to want to deal with WWE if everybody else is running for the hills and WWE's going to stay. Commitment or not. This is a huge, huge situation that could turn very bad for WWE. This could seriously damage relationships with sponsors that they've built up. WWE has an agreement through the next decade with the Saudi government. It may not be easy to get out of it, but they're going to have to try and get out of it. If they can't, who's to say the U.S. government's not going to get involved? The U.S. government may look into this and, and they may get involved with this and WWE's going to have no choice but to pull out. WWE also has a real possibility of not their fans, not the mainstream media and their sponsors, but more importantly, WWE has a huge chance of their workers, their employees, who have been told, I'm going to read you the entire story, their employees have been told not to say anything negatively about the Saudi government, Saudi Arabia in general, and the Saudi deal that WWE has has pretty much signed to put on events in their country for the next 10 years. And you know for a fact that there are people in that company that feel strongly about WWE going there and disapprove of that. And believe it or not, WWE, you know, I want, I want to throw this on the table for you. WWE is really, really, really hiding the situation with Sasha Banks. We don't know what's going on with Sasha Banks. Rumors abound that she's pregnant, that she's hurt. WWE pretty much came out and said, Ryan Satin even reported on it yesterday, and he can't figure out what's going on. He's just speculating. He's hearing little bits and pieces from people inside WWE that he knows, but they're still being very secretive about it. What if Sasha Banks spoke up about this shit and WWE canned her? They punished her. Benched. WWE said that Sasha Banks has a back problem, but on her Instagram stories yesterday, she's in her home working out. She doesn't seem to have a back problem yesterday. And all her Instagram stories and all her social media posts have this real cryptic feel to it. So who's to say that someone like Sasha Banks, an employee of this company, spoke out about WWE going to Saudi Arabia and how she doesn't like it when all she wants to do is wrestle and WWE rather be in bed with these fucking people accepting blood money while innocent people are getting tortured and murdered, and Sasha Banks, all she wants to do is wrestle, WWE is going into a country where women aren't allowed to wrestle. Maybe she spoke out about it. It's not really out of the realm of possibility. WWE also has to look at their stocks. They lost $1.25 billion over the last two days. That's a lot of fucking money. That is a lot of fucking money. WWE stock was treading to hit over $100 a share. WWE was at $96 a share within the last two days. They went down to about $82 a share. I haven't looked at the numbers today. And I'm sure it's going to go down. Now, WWE stock, I don't even think WWE realized or, or felt the stock would ever get that high. WWE really hasn't done anything to deserve a $100 a share stock. They've done nothing. So, WWE stock has exceeded major expectations. And it may flatline to a, a base that is a little bit more reasonable for WWE. $40 to $50 a share. But if people are backing out, they're not backing out for any other reason except this Saudi government deal that is now catching mainstream attention. And more outlets are are prone to pick this shit up. You know? WWE needs to have some sort of morals here. They're really exposing themselves for what is really important. And it transcends everything. It's exactly what I've talked about. The more money that this company makes, the less that they will care about television. They don't care. It's like they, it's like they 
intentionally want to kill this company, and they don't care. WWE is giving you an impression that the people behind the scenes, all they give a shit about is themselves, and they don't care what they do with the talent. They don't give a shit about their TV shows. They don't give a shit about their branding, their company, their trademark. They don't give a shit about anything because they're whoring themselves out in such a fashion that they're whoring themselves out in such a fashion that everything... That, that trickles down. It's a trickle-down effect. They're ruining the prestige. They're ruining everything. Nothing feels important anymore. The only thing that feels important is this company making money and the suits and ties making money so that they have enough money for this lifetime and the next 10. That's a company that doesn't give a shit about itself and its fans. They've really exposed themselves here. Money isn't everything. The murder of this Turkish journalist was overseen by the fucking prince, the same prince that WWE is doing business with. If you're running a business, are you going to want to be in bed with this fucking guy? That is a killer for your brand. An absolute killer for your brand. I don't even know why WWE wanted to go to this country because they feel like they have this high and almighty attitude. that, Like the WWE, like Vince, like Triple H, Stephanie, and everybody involved can, can make a difference in this world. You can't change the mentality of these people. They don't allow women to wrestle. Where gay and homosexual people are murdered. Because of their beliefs? Because of the lifestyle they want to live? I don't understand this. And like this poor guy that was killed. Because he doesn't agree with the way the government is being run, or the country is being run, any negative talk about them and what they're doing, you're dead. And it's overseen by the same guy that Vince McMahon is photographed shaking hands with. If that doesn't sit on Vince McMahon's mind to pull out of this fucking deal and do whatever he has to do to get back and do what's right, I don't know what to tell you. Vince McMahon deserves everything that's coming to him. There is a moral approach that WWE has to take here. They're responsible. They're a corporate company. They're a publicly traded company company that represents diverse viewership. And now it's being thrown to the wolves. It's at risk. For what? Some fucking money? That you could end up making on your own anyway if you did the right fucking thing? Who the fuck needs their money? Give me a fucking break. Crown Jewel may not be cancelled. I see a bunch of people in the community, oh, Crown Jewel is going to get cancelled. It could get cancelled. In fact, I would cancel it. I would cancel it if I was in charge. Done. Pull out. It may not be that easy, though. But what is WWE going to feel like when they go into that country and everybody else who's back to WWE says, well, you're fighting this battle alone. We want nothing to do with you. Vince McMahon's back is to the wall now. Who's more important to him? The fucking Saudi government? Who doesn't give a fuck about Vince McMahon? Or his company? Or the sponsors that have been by WWE side all these years... To help support him and his company and get him back on track to being a family-friendly product. No, no, we want to be in bed with people who murder innocent fucking people. Who don't have or give women equal rights. Who, if you live a different lifestyle, you're murdered. It's fucking ridiculous. To turn a blind eye for the Saudi government and their fucking millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's bullshit. Absolutely fucking bullshit. Now, the WWE, this is a decade-long deal with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and WWE, for an undisclosed amount of money, I believe it's upwards towards $250, $300 million for 10 years. It's obviously a large number. It's a huge number. Do they need it? No, they don't. Now, that was enough. This money, this deal, was enough for WWE to ruin... I'm not going to sit here and tell you I I never wanted to see Shawn Michaels wrestle again. But 
This is the type of deal that had and coaxed Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement and ultimately ruined what was a special moment. Went back on someone's word who he stayed true. He stayed true to that word for eight years. And it's people like this who Vince McMahon is working with to pretty much ruin a special moment. And for who? For what? For them? They don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about Shawn Michaels in the eight years that he stayed retired. They don't give a fuck about the wrestling fan. Now these are the people you're doing business with. Murderers. They coaxed Shawn Michaels to come out of retirement. Now the recent murder of this Turkish journalist by the Saudi government, it seems like the world is now paying attention to them once again. For the wrong reasons. Fox News picked up on the story about WWE's ties to Saudi Arabia and the controversy surrounding the decision to keep this deal going in spite of the public outcry to shut it down. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was also said to be instrumental in this journalist's murder as well as he is the same man who orchestrated WWE's involvement with his country. Saudi Arabia is holding WWE events as essentially nothing more than propaganda propaganda pieces to boast about their progressive nature while they're executing homosexuals and sending hit squads after journalists who write negative things about their regime. So they're using WWE. I don't know how to... I, that, that was worded That was worded in a, very, in, in a very good way. Propaganda pieces to boast about their progressive nature while executing homosexuals and sending hit squads after journalists who don't agree with their regime. They are using WWE. They don't give a fuck about WWE. They want to present themselves in a light in which they have no interest in presenting themselves in a good light. They're going to continue doing what they want to do, and they're going to hope that it doesn't get picked up by mainstream media. Meanwhile, they want to use Vince McMahon and everything that he built up as like, hey, look at us. We're all good. We're using a popular brand to pretty much accelerate our new way of, of living uh, and, our, and our new direction for the country. Are you fucking kidding me? That is absolutely p- fucking pathetic. Dave Milcher mentioned on the Wrestling Observer Radio that while he doesn't know for sure, the law of averages would dictate that some WWE superstars might want to stay home this time around instead of going back to Saudi Arabia. Those people who have uttered and shown some displeasure about the Saudi gut, what if they go over to Saudi Arabia, and what if something happens to them? You never know. You never know. Going there now, everybody that works for WWE may be at a higher risk, more danger than ever before. Would you risk that? I know I wouldn't. Dave Meltzer says, and I quote, I haven't even bothered... Uh, I, he says, I haven't even bothered because what does it matter what they think when you really think about it? I'm sure the law of averages, what, whatever it is, there's 200 people on that roster, you know, and the law, uh, the law of averages is that there are probably dozens that don't want to go or don't feel right about something. But if you said something now, it would create a mainstream media story. It would shine a light on this whole thing, and it would be bad for WWE if the light was shined on this right now. So... Anybody who says anything publicly, and that's the thing because nobody is going to say anything anyway, you don't really have, I don't want to say you don't have freedom of speech, but you kind of don't. It's different from most companies, end quote. It was noted that in the UFC, there would be a different situation because fighters would say whatever they want. In WWE, it would be much different because of the way the company is run. So we probably shouldn't expect any. Any more backlash within the company about WWE doing the deal with the Saudi Arabian government? Uh, you can watch the show or not, but if you don't, then WWE is is pretty much forcing you to watch Shawn Michaels come out of retirement for a bunch of people that don't give a fuck about Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement and a bunch of people that don't give a fuck about their company. You know, they give, 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 give. Meanwhile, they're giving to people who don't appreciate Jack shit. You're taking this opportunity and you're taking this once in a lifetime moment away from people here in this country. For people in that country that don't deserve shit. And that's me speaking as a wrestling fan. If Shawn Michaels is coming out of retirement to wrestle 
his first match back after eight years. Who doesn't want to go watch that? No, but you're giving it to these people. It's ridiculous. Twitter's blown up with the cancel crown jewel hashtag. And we've seen it flood the timelines on Twitter. And needless to say, plenty of fans are upset. Over 70 people and counting have used the hashtag as of this morning. And plenty more who are going to be using it throughout the weekend as well. There was a recent poll on PW Stream on their Twitter account. Fans were asked if WWE should cancel Crown Jewel and a resounding 70% of the fans that have responded to that poll said that WWE should break the deal with Saudi Arabia while the other 30% think that they should continue as planned. With over 1,200 people replying to this vote in just a span of 24 hours, that is a pretty good sampling of how people feel about the Saudi Arabian deal and Crown Jewel. Only time will tell what WWE does. But it may be a situation where they simply cannot back out at this point. That's something that they should have thought about. That's something that they really should have put on the table as a weighing factor. Should we do it or should we stay away? And this is WWE. This is karma coming back to WWE. I would be lying to you. I honestly would be lying to you if if I said I'm worried about WWE. I'm not. They don't need Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is using them as a fucking puppet. They don't need Saudi Arabia. But I'm also glad that this is an eye-opening experience for WWE and and Vince McMahon. Maybe next time he'll realize that money isn't everything. Maybe he'll realize that he's got to put more focus on the people here. More focus on his product. More focus on what's important. You're going to make your money. If Vince McMahon was smart and worried about producing a good show week in and week out, the fans will come. The reason why WWE is doing these outside deals with these other countries is because the people in this fucking country have no interest in the goddamn fucking product. You're driving the fans away here in record numbers. So the first person in a different country that wants to get WWE and pay you all this money for what you got, of course Vince McMahon's going to do it because he can't do that here. You can barely sell out a fucking SmackDown Live taping. WWE Evolution, your first women's pay-per-view. Not really doing too well, too hot with the ticket sales. People are leaving this product in record numbers. Vince McMahon is going to listen to anybody that's going to throw money at him. Because he knows right now, the product is fucking garbage. What he's doing right now is not working. To the fucking idiot on social media, they think that the WWE is doing and hitting all the right notes. They're not. They're not. I am glad this is receiving mainstream attention. Not because of its moral basis. And if you're a decent fucking human being, you would know what to do without even thinking about it. But I'm glad that this is happening for WWE because they fucking deserve everything that's coming to them. Karma is a fucking bitch. And when you put fucking money first and foremost above your fans and everybody that fucking works for you, that risks their lives every single fucking night for you, and you don't treat them with the fucking respect that they deserve, this is exactly what you get. I'm glad that this shit is happening, and I'm, I hope it gets worse for this fucking company. I really do. I hope the stock continues to drop. I hope television ratings continue to drop because there's no other fucking way WWE is going to realize what they're doing is wrong unless you hit them where it fucking hurts and that's in their fucking pocket. Crown Jewel may not be canceled, but go ahead. Put on Crown Jewel. Put on Shawn Michaels coming out of retirement. Put on a WrestleMania caliber match with Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Give these people a fucking... Tournament, who who, 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 who you're going to crown the best in the world. Go ahead. Do, all, all, do everything you got to do for these people. Go ahead. I'm going to see how many people here in this country are left supporting what the fuck you're doing. You're already driven away most of your fucking audience based on what you do on Monday and Tuesday night. Now you want to take that a step further and have moral 
Fucking disrespect for everybody who feels strongly about this. Go ahead. I dare you. I dare you. Crown Jewel may not be canceled, but we know what WWE needs to do. Will they do it? Only time will tell. This is going to be a true test to how Vince McMahon is as a human being. Off the script. This is episode 243. This is part number one to start your weekend off the right way, man. I got a bunch of fucking news. We're going to cover the entirety of WWE Evolution, man. We're going to make this an all-women's episode. Some of the news I got is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Get ready to rant. Get ready to have your heads fucking roll, man. It's time. Off the script, 243 plus the newest sponsor, WWE Slam Crate Unboxing, right here on episode 243. Let's hit the introductions, and I'll be right back in just a little bit. You may call yourself the Callahan Death Machine, but I'm the New York City Death Machine. And there's a clothesline there by Bully Ray. Those are the words uttered by Bully Ray at High Intensity 7. Knife edge shot. No effect. Look at that. Look at look at this psychotic son of a bitch, Sammy Callahan, taking his vest off. He's taking his vest off. Opening up his chest for Bully Ray. Oh my God! As the ancient Chinese proverb says, "Be careful what you wish for." <laughs> the House of Glory faithful are pleased. At what they are watching. Okay. Shh. Oh my God. Callahan may be rethinking. Unzipping that vest. This has certainly been an old school versus new school mentality. Bully Ray wanting to teach Callahan a lesson. Another one. Oh my God. I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I can't call that. You have ears. You have eyes. Come to your own conclusions. Ow. Just leveled Callahan with a clothesline. That knife edge chop did absolutely nothing. Bully Ray now follows to the outside. Into the steel barricade goes Callahan. We are so lucky and fortunate to be calling this match for you guys. This match probably wouldn't have happened anywhere else except for House of Glory. Oh my God, Callahan, right into the barricade. Sammy has wanted this match. It never happened until tonight. Callahan called Bully Ray a, pretty much a coward. Oh, knife edge chopped to the steel post. And Callahan, his fist, his hand, met the steel post as well. JD, skin wait versus minute, metal. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Bully Ray has a beer. Well, the House of Glory faithful sitting directly in front of these guys got their money's worth right there. We'll go home to the wife and kids tonight. Yeah, honey, I got a beer thrown on me by Bully Wright as he goes right into the barricade. Oh, look at this. Look at this sick, psychotic son of a bitch. I think 
guy's not normal, Ben. The, the guy has a few screws loose. Let, let's just say that that knife edge chop maybe, was maybe juiced. I be, maybe I should be quiet. He may come over here and shut me down again. Oh, knife edge chop there by Callahan. This guy does not care. He does not care whatsoever. JD, the count's at eight. Referee's gonna let this one go. Crown Jewel Championship on the line. Thumbs up. There you go, Callahan, full head of steam. Around the ring we go. Super kick by Bully Ray. If I could do the Chris Berman impersonation, I would have did it right there. off this shitty fucking product by coming on here and speaking the fucking goddamn truth about this fucking filth. And I can book a better show taking a fucking dump after eating my fucking Chipotle chorizo with extra cheese. I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. Have I ever? Of course not. WWE is great, eh? Uh, fuck you, Japan, and, uh, Canada, oh, Canada. Ah, uh, Danny! <laughs> Ooh, what, what is it, man? Can I suck your dick? Ooh, what is it, man? And well, this is the number one fucking podcast. Right here! On YouTube.com! This is off the script. Man, that Bully Ray and Sammy Callahan match was fucking fantastic. I I've been with House of Glory for two years now. We're coming up on House of Glory eight-year anniversary. Hog 8. December 15th at the NYC Arena in Queens, New York. And I've been with them for two years. And I do have my favorite matches that I've called so far alongside Matthew Ryan Shapiro, my commentary partner. And that Sammy Callahan and Bully Ray match was definitely one of my favorites, man. It, it, it truly was the embodiment of, of what Extreme Warfare was, our Extreme Warfare event last Friday. And I thought they absolutely killed it. So if you guys want to see the full event, um, it, it's going to be progressively shown on YouTube throughout the coming weeks. But if you want to see that full match, you guys can go to House of Glory's YouTube page right now. It is live on their YouTube channel right now in full. That ending was fucking crazy, man. Absolutely fucking crazy. Bully... And Sammy absolutely killed it. And the one thing that I've always done and I kept my word on was to myself. Kept my word uh, to myself. I don't want to read the results or find out anything in the weeks to come. What's going to happen at these shows. I feel like it ruins the genuine aspect of it. Everything that you hear in that, in that match is, is genuine. And the reactions of when there's an interference... Or if there's a surprise or a big spot, everything is genuine, man. I like to keep it that way because not only am I doing my job and trying to present the best, you know, the best commentary I can possible and relay the story to you guys the best way that I can, I'm also there as a fan because I love this business and I love the sport. And, you know, I don't want to take away that fan aspect. I, I want to I wanna go into it not only as a professional but as a fan. And I hope you guys enjoy what you see there with Bully and Sammy. Like I said, they killed it. And I hope you guys enjoy my commentary on top of that, man. I, that was one of my favorite matches uh, in the two years that I've been with House of Glory. So if you guys go down to the description, you're going to see House of Glory's YouTube channel and their link. Go and check it out, man. Leave a comment there and show your appreciation for both Bully and Sammy at Extreme Warfare. Speaking of Sammy, man, we all know Sammy wrestles for Impact Wrestling. And Impact Wrestling is bound for glory this Sunday in New York, in Queens, at the Melrose Ballroom. Believe it or not, I will be attending Bound for Glory. I will be Impact Wrestling's special guest, man. I am thrilled that they actually got back to me and they are giving me the opportunity to go to Bound for Glory. I'm going to be covering the show and I'm going to be live tweeting and then I'm going to be doing a review right here on the channel. So if you guys enjoyed my Slammiversary review... If you guys enjoyed Slammiversary, I would be excited for Bound for Glory, man. I think I think Impact is even going to take it a step further uh, on what they did with Slammiversary. 
They are riding high right now. They're getting back to what they need to be doing. And the product that they're, that they're presenting, especially like their pay-per-views, like we've seen with Slammiversary and Bound for Glory, they're really, really nailing it out of the park, man. I can't wait to see what these guys do on Sunday night. The one match I'm excited for is Sammy and OVE versus Pentagon Phoenix and Brian Cage. That's what I'm looking forward to, man. And then LAX versus the OGs for the Impact Tag Team titles. I think it's uh, uh, what they're calling a Gorilla Concrete match. I don't know what that entails, but... All I know is LAX, I mentioned this when I was doing House of Glory at Extreme Warfare, LAX wrestled Rich Swan and ACH, and LAX has this Young Bucks type vibe to them, where they are setting the trend for tag team wrestling. LAX is doing major things right now. LAX... Santana and Ortiz may be the best tag team in the world today, right now, period. There's nobody working as hard, there's nobody hungrier, and they're showing you. Everything that these guys do, man, there's just a a buzz and an excitement around LAX that you rarely, rarely see. And I swear to God, man, this is my prediction. If, if Triple H is not calling these guys in two years, probably less than that. Or whenever the Impact deal is up. If Triple H is not knocking on LAX's door for NXT, I don't know what the fuck they're doing over there in Stanford, Connecticut, man. LAX is doing great things. I see it every single month at House of Glory. Can't wait to see what they do at Bound for Glory. So, I want to thank Impact Wrestling for inviting me out. I will be there. I don't know where I'm sitting, but I will be their special guest, and I'm excited to see what they do for Bound for Glory. Expect the review uh, on Monday when I get back home, man. So, thank you guys so very much for all that. I want to thank you guys as well for the support on my WWE 2K19 content. Episode 1 and Episode 2 of My Career Mode has done fantastic. And it's doing better than I ever expected, man. Episode 1 did almost 15,000 views with almost 1,600 likes. My Career Mode, Mr. 9 to 5 is back. Looking a little bit more gray, but he's back. Episode 2 did over 10,000 views. We did over 1,000 likes. You guys are really... Just kicking ass with the with the viewership and the support on those videos. Episode 3 and Episode 4 will be coming this weekend. So look forward to that. If you guys missed anything that I did this week, the WW2K stuff, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, it is all there linked in the annotation. Go and check it out. And thank you guys for all your support on everything, man. We are dangerously close to 99,000 subscribers. I will be unleashing the new t-shirt at 99,000. I want everybody wearing that motherfucker when we hit 100,000. And I'm giving myself a time frame, man. Once we get to War Games, NXT TakeOver War Games, I want to be at 100,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. My palms are getting itchy. It's going to happen. And I would not be here without you guys. So thank you for all your support. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. We're going to go through our sponsors, man. But before I do the, the normal lineup of sponsors, I do have one new sponsor. I do have one new sponsor, man. And that is WWE Slam Crate presented by Loot Crate, man. I have been sponsored by Loot Crate and Slam Crate before. And I'm going to save you guys money on your subscription box if you indeed are excited and interested in what I'm about to unbox for you guys right now. What is Slam Crate? It is a bi-monthly subscription, and it's a box of goodies that is delivered right to your door with exclusive WWE collectibles. You're going to get gear, you're going to get t-shirts, Right from WWE Shop, man. This is WWE licensed merchandise. Items that you're not going to find in any other subscription box anywhere but WWE Slam Crate. Loot Crate, believe it or not, has sold over 30 million crates. That is fucking crazy. Unbelievable. WWE Slam Crate is, like I said, a crate with once... Uh, or one-of-a-kind WWE items. It features items from Ric Flair, The Ultimate Warrior, Jake the Snake Roberts, Razor Ramon, current WWE superstars. Like this t-shirt I'm wearing, uh, AJ Styles. I got this in a WWE Slam Crate. It's one of my favorite t-shirts that I have in my collection. Man, I love this shirt. It fits me really good. There's a guaranteed t-shirt in every crate. 
And believe it or not, listen to this. This is a, an, an astounding fact. WWE Slam Crate has over $60 worth of value in each crate. And I am going to give you a chance at 25% off your first subscription. Normally, they go from $30 to $35 a month. I'm going to save you 25% off on your first subscription, man. You're going to use the code. At the end of this thing, when you when you see what's in this, you're going to go to lootcrate.com slash JD from NY. You're going to punch that code in, and you're going to save 25% off your first subscription for Loot Crate. Once again, that's lootcrate.com slash JD from NY. Enter my code, JD from NY. 25% off, done deal. You're on your way to getting WWE Slam Crate. Let's see what's in here, man. I have no idea what's in here. Pretty excited to open this one up. Oh, my God, man. I see an Alexa Bliss figure. I'm not really a big fan of Alexa Bliss, but we'll see what happens. Let's see here. Um, it is an Alexa Bliss figure. This is an exclusive figure, collectible figure. WWE Slam Stars, as you guys see there. Let me uh, turn on my screen so I could show you. WWE Slam Stars. Let's see what this thing is, man. I usually put these things on display. Oh, that's nice, man. That's actually... This is actually very... This is actually... If I could take it out of here. I don't want to break it or anything. You know what? I'm, I'm, I may just leave it in here. If I can't get it out, yeah, I got it out. Man, this is a nice fucking figure. Look at that. That is a nice figure. That's detailed. You see there? It's a nice figure, man. Alexa Bliss. That's an exclusive figure you're only going to get in WWE Slam Crate. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And it comes with a stand. And I'll put her on the stand. I'll probably put her on the desk. Right there. Not a fan of Alexa, but there you go. Oh, it comes with the ring, too. Oh, I got I got one like this, too. It, it, I have a Stone Cold Steve Austin one. Comes with the ring, comes with the ropes. Yeah, we'll set that up. We'll have fun with that, man. That's awesome. I love shit like that. T-shirt. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I couldn't ask for a better T-shirt, man. I don't even have an Elias T-shirt yet. That is awesome. That is awesome. Walk with Elias. Not only if they'd give him an intercontinental title to solidify his greatness, man. That is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, man. Let's. Can we open this here? Let me see. They wrapped this one pretty well. Dude, look at this. It's a fucking pillow. It is a goddamn pillow. It is a Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels... Pillow. <laughs> that is so great, dude. That is so awesome. Look at this shit. Yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'll probably put it on the bed, put it on put it on display, but that is that is sweet, man. That is sweet. So nice. We got a patch applying the Miz I am awesome patch. I don't know where I'm applying it, but there you go. I used to have a book bag, a book bag or a backpack when I went to high school. I used to put uh, band patches all over my backpack. People used to think I'm a, I was a lunatic. I had Metallica, Machine Head, Testament, Cannibal Corpse, Sepultura, Soulfly, Soul Soulfly, Fear Factory, all over the place on my backpack, man. Uh, women's champion. I love these pins. Raw Women's Championship pin, right there. I love that stuff. As you guys can see, right behind me. I got my uh, wall of pins right there. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I believe this is a poster. This may be a poster on the opposite side of this. Oh, my goodness. B team, B team. No, no, no. That's the Miztourage. They weren't good then, and they're not good now. There you go. WWE Slam Crate, man. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased with that. That's the type of stuff you're going to get, man. That pillow, you're not going to find anywhere else. That shirt, you're not going to find anywhere else. That's exclusive licensed WWE merchandise. www.lootcrate.com slash JD from NY. Enter the code JD from NY. Use that unique link. Enter the code. Save 25% off, man. Thank you to Loot Crate for, 
for everything. That is awesome. Some great stuff in there. And that's the type of stuff that you are going to get, man. Over $60 worth of stuff. And you're going to save 25% off using my code. So thank you to Loot Crate. Thank you for sponsoring the show, guys. And thank you for checking it out. If you do indeed check it out, remember to use our link. JD from NY, man. My other sponsors, as you guys know, quickly, barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Uh, use code BSHOP20 for your t-shirts and your discount on the t-shirts, man. The new one is coming very, very soon. Thank you to everybody that has purchased a t-shirt this week. Harry's, you guys know the deal with Harry's, man. Harry's.com slash script. It is the best shave that you will have, period. And Harry's is so, they are so ingrained. They are going to make you believe that it's the best shave. They are so confident that it's the best shave of your life that they're going to give you a free trial shave set on the house. And all you guys got to do is pay the shipping and handling. Harry's.com slash script. You're going to get a free trial shave set. You're going to get a razor blade, a razor handle, a protective case, and the foaming shave gel, which soothes and hydrates. So make sure you guys go and get that, man. Harry's.com slash script. I've been using it for six months now. Haven't used anything else, and I guarantee you, whatever you guys are using, you're going to throw it away, and you're going to use Harry's, and Harry's is going to be your wingman for your shaving needs. Finally, guys, Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. One month free of their service plus one free audio book of your choice. Over 200,000 choices to choose from, a lot of which are wrestling related. You guys want cooking, you guys want sports, you guys want politics, you guys want crime, romance, science fiction. It's all there, man. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And the best thing about it is if you guys don't like the service, if you don't think Audible's for you, you can cancel at any time within the 30 days and you're going to get to keep your audio book for free. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash off the script. I want to thank all my Patreons, man, that signed up this week. You guys are awesome. Shout out to Brett with a $5 pledge. Jose Charles with a $5 pledge. Miguel Perez with a $7 pledge. Angelo Credo with a $5 pledge. And you guys are the patrons of the week, man. Thank you guys so much for all your continued support. If you guys want to support on Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY 206. Let's get into the news, man. You, you know we covered the Saudi Arabia stuff. And those are my thoughts on the Saudi Arabian deal with WWE and the mainstream attention that they're getting for uh, the wrong reasons. And we'll see what happens with that. But... WWE going into evolution, WWE evolution, they're not doing much better. You know, with evolution happening just, I think it's like five days away from Crown Jewel, obviously a lot of people are trying to connect the puzzle and figure the puzzle out. Is WWE putting on evolution because they know for a fact that the women can't get into Saudi Arabia and they want to throw a bone, they want to give uh, a little pity party to the WWE women's roster and just have them have their own show because they know they won't be able to compete in such a big event like Crown Jewel. You know, a lot of people are, are thinking that way. A lot of people are, are, are having that type of mentality. And, and it's it's tough to argue. Nobody's, nobody in the company is going to come, come out and outwardly say, yeah, this is the reason why we're doing it. They're going to hype it up as the biggest thing ever. You know, first time ever. And nobody's going to really say, yeah, well, we'll put in this show on because the women can't really do anything in Saudi Arabia yet. WWE thinks they're going to be a miracle man and try, and try and change what happens in that country. And it may not ever happen. It may not ever happen. You guys know how I feel about evolution. There's a lot of bullshit behind evolution. I honestly feel like the women's revolution is a complete farce. It's a joke. It's a scam. WWE is going to make you believe that Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey is the biggest main event that they could possibly ever put on for the women, and it's not. It's not. Because TMZ is covering it because it's being picked up by mainstream media. That is not what the women's revolution was built on. The women's revolution was built on the women that did it in NXT. Sasha Banks, Bayley, Paige, Emma, who's no longer there now with Ring of Honor. Women like that. 
and, and the body of work that Sasha Banks and Bailey went out there and showed you, listen, I want everyone to watch what we can do. We are on even playing fields with the men. And if you don't believe us, Sasha Banks and Bailey took everybody by the balls and shut everybody up. And for a half an hour, they had everybody's attention. Everybody's attention. A match that will be looked upon as the foundation for why this revolution even got started and why it was brought to the mainstream. But WWE doesn't really go back on what made everything about this revolution special. They're, they're, really, they're really fucking the entirety of this revolution, this evolution up. And I can't get behind anything because they're pushing people right now who are completely the opposite of what made this women's revolution special. And you guys know how I feel about it. I'm not going to sit here and, and just reiterate everything that I've talked about. I, I've went about it, you know, uh, in a completely different way. And, you know, I, I, I might be in the minority when it comes to my opinion, but I don't really give a shit. I don't really give a shit. Evolution to me is a complete joke. If you want an evolution on that show, then you're going to watch the matches that are going to be presented by NXT, NXT UK. You're not going to watch anything that has to do with the main roster. The main roster fucked it up. This is not a, an evolution. This is not what I look at when I think of an evolution of the women's division. They're actually going backwards. And it's a, a sad thing to see. They killed everything. Sasha and Bailey, women like that, are nothing more than a footnote. They're nothing more than a fucking highlight package. And, and they're used to further this agenda. And meanwhile, Bailey and Sasha both don't even have a fucking match. They don't even have a match announced for this show. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, one woman who does have a match is Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss was the first woman on the active roster that was given a match at Evolution. She was put in a match with Trish Stratus. That was the match that WWE printed up the flyer for, that they put on the big screen, that they ushered out to the press. Look at us. Women's Evolution. First pay-per-view ever for the WWE, featuring the entire female roster. Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus is going to be one of the major matches to hook people in for this show. Now, clearly in WWE, as you know, this is an every week thing. There's moving pieces, plans change, for better or for worse. Seemed like they had booked two big matches for the upcoming women's pay-per-view, one of them being Alexa and Trish, the other being Lita versus Mickie James. Both of these matches didn't make any sense to me. Both of these matches didn't make any sense to anybody. Now, if you really want Alexa, you know, I don't think she would have fared well against Trish Stratus one-on-one, -on -one, period. I'll give you my thoughts on that in a second. But Mickie James and Lita? I mean, to me, that doesn't make sense. What would have made more sense was Mickey and Alexa possibly teaming up for a introduction to a women's tag team title. Lita versus Trish would have made a lot of sense, being that they have a lot of history with one another. Trish Stratus versus anybody else. Trish Stratus versus a Bailey. Trish Stratus versus a Sasha Banks would have been a lot better than Alexa Bliss. Why? Because those women can actually wrestle. Those women can actually wrestle. So now WWE changed everything up. Instead of those two matches happening one-on-one, -on -one, they just fused them together, and now the women are having a tag team match. So it's going to be Trish and Lita versus Mickey and Alexa. That is what we're getting. Everybody is wondering why this happened. This is a rather interesting decision, as stated on, Barn Burner, on Barn Burner's No Holds Barred podcast. WWE did this for a very interesting reason. Why is that, you ask? They say, and I quote, I know they just changed the match that Trish was supposed to have with Alexa Bliss. Now it's a tag team match. Why? Because Alexa Bliss appears to be more injured than people have said. I don't know. I haven't confirmed. But that is what I've heard and the reason why they changed the match. End quote. So Alexa Bliss is so hurt that they... I, I don't really know. Isn't she in the Mixed Match? She, she's not in the Mixed Match Challenge, right? She, she was pulled from the Mixed Match Challenge and pulled from her team with Braun Strowman. 
but she is not hurt enough to be pulled from evolution? So if she was that hurt, or if she is that hurt, why is she appearing on the show? Don't really understand that logic. Maybe it's favoritism. Maybe it's not. I'm going to go with the first option. Why did they change Trish Stratus and Alexa Bliss from a one-on-one match? Do you really want to know why they changed it? And, and it's not because Alexa is hurt. The reason why they changed Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus one-on-one to this tag team match is because somebody in that company knows that, A, the match wasn't selling well on its own to get people to sit in the fucking seats at the Nassau Coliseum. Number two, Alexa Bliss is bad at what she does. You're going to have someone like Trish Stratus come out and wrestle on this pay-per-view, and the first woman that you're going to put her up against is Alexa Bliss, who can't even bring any of the active female wrestlers to a good match. But you're going to expect her and to call upon her to have a good match with Trish Stratus. WWE is saving themselves from a fucking embarrassment. WWE is saving themselves from a disaster with Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus. That is the reason you're not going to hear anywhere else. That is the reason why they stopped this one-on-one match and made it a tag team match instead. Alexa Bliss is garbage at what she does. Name me one match this year that Alexa Bliss had that you're going to go back and say, Alexa Bliss had a good match. I can't think of any. I can't think of any. And if there was one match, it was fucking unimportant. But more likely than not, there is none. That's the reason why they got Alexa Bliss teaming with Mickey James against Lita and Trish. So now instead of one Hall of Famer, Alexa Bliss is now amongst three. How that worked out, if you don't think that there is some political fucking bullshit behind that one, how she goes from one female Hall of Famer to now three? I can think of anybody else on that roster that would be better suited for that spot besides Alexa Bliss. Give me a fucking break. Now, I don't want Alexa Bliss to be hurt to a point where it's serious. I don't wish that upon anybody. She's been working very lightly on television. She hasn't wrestled since her match with Ronda Rousey. And she hasn't been on house shows either. Looks like the only the only situation that turns out uh, for everybody is that if you're an Alexa Bliss fan, she will be at Evolution. But we don't know how, how much of a workload she's going to have in that match. It may be all Mickey. It may be all Lita. It may be all Trish. And Alexa, you know, being that She is a favorite amongst the WWE management. She may be there just for political reasons because she's a favorite of everybody. She may have no workload whatsoever. She may just do what Alexa Bliss does best. Nothing. Run away like a coward. Play a good heel. You know? But that's the reason why they changed the match. This match was going to be a disaster. There was no way Alexa Bliss was going to bring Trish Stratus to a good match. None. None. You couldn't, you could not sell me on that match to have me sit there and watch this entire pay-per-view based on what, on what you were presenting me with that match. None. None. You still can't get me to sit there, even with, even with the change match, but, you know, it, it makes things seem a little bit worse. Now, like I said, instead of one Hall of Famer, Alex is getting three. You know? So, it is what it is. That's my take on Alexa Bliss. So... Meltzer actually chimed in on this too. He says, so the actual story behind this is that it was always going to be a tag team match, he said. Bullshit. That is bullshit. Meltzer and his sources are claiming that the match was supposed to always be a tag team match. Really now. So WWE just went on and on and on for weeks. For weeks. With the graphic of Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus. as one of the marquee matches, as one of the headline matches for Evolution. If it was a tag team match all along, Lita wasn't doing anything. Trish wasn't doing anything. Alexa wasn't doing anything. Mickey wasn't doing anything. But then WWE went ahead and announced Mickey versus Lita. If this match was supposed to be the match all along... 
Why did WWE announce both singles matches and put them and feature them prominently above everything else that they have yet to announce? Meltzer is full of shit. He says it was always supposed to be a tag team match. But as silly as this sounds, they thought that Trish Stratus and Alexa Bliss, if they announced that match, it will sell a ton of tickets. So they wanted that to happen. They wanted to sell a ton of tickets. I don't know if they didn't want Trish in a singles match, and once again Alexa is hurt, but it has not changed because of Alexa's injury. This was the original plan. So he's, he's stating that this is not happening because of Alexa's injury. This was the original plan. So Meltzer looks like he's covering up for something. Again, it makes no sense to me. If this was the original plan, why did they go out of their way for weeks to announce these matches one-on-one? It doesn't make any sense. So he continues on, and I quote, So I'm guessing that they just felt maybe they didn't want Lita to do a singles match. Whatever it is, it boggles my mind that they thought by announcing uh, singles matches, you know, that uh, it would get over, and it didn't. And they couldn't announce Ronda versus Nikki Bella, so they figured they needed a big match to make people buy tickets. And when they decided that this was the big match that they wanted, they announced Alexa Bliss versus Trish Stratus to fill the seats. They obviously couldn't do Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella yet or announce that because, hey, that's not going to get people in the seats. And B, you know, they, they obviously had to wait for the storyline to play out. Now that Ronda and Nikki is out there and they're doing that match, now they can revert back to the tag team match, which they figured was a weaker draw. End quote. I, I, I claim bullshit. I really claim bullshit on that. It seems as if this was the case. If this was the case, WWE used blatant fault, false advertising if they really advertised this match with no plan to put it on. But you have to consider what you're getting in return and all the reasons around why a decision like that could have needed to been made. The truth is, as reported by Barn Burner's No Holds Barred podcast, that the matter has way more to do with Alexa Bliss's injury and the matches were advertised because they were scheduled. They were scheduled. Whoever is saying that this was always the plan was obviously someone in WWE trying to protect the sad fact that Bliss very well could be injured, uh, seriously injured, to where she really can't work, but she is still trying to get through this injury and prolonging the inevitable, the inevitable by competing at Evolution. I think it's all bullshit. I honestly think this is all bullshit. It's exactly the way I told you it was. WWE announced these matches and Meltzer claiming that this was the plan all along makes zero sense. Zero sense. And they're making this match now because, you know, if Alexa Bliss was hurt, then she would sit out this show. If she was seriously hurt, she would sit out this show because they pulled her from the Mixed Match Challenge. There's minimal work that she could do there. She don't have to do most of the workload. The men could take most of the workload there with those mixed, mixed tag team matches. So what is it really? It's very odd. It's very bizarre. I'm sticking by my gut instinct here. Let me know what you guys think about that. Trish Stratus reportedly continuing on with the evolution, you know, story that we have here. Lots of evolution stuff here. Trish Stratus reportedly scheduled for more than one return match. Trish Stratus' name was a big one when it was announced that she would be taking part in WWE Evolution. It seems like we should be in store for more than just one dose of Stratisfaction. The Barn Burners No Holds Barred podcast briefly discussed Trish Stratus, and they explained that there are plans for more than just one outing for Stratus during her WWE return. They say, and I quote, from what I'm hearing, Trish Stratus coming back at Evolution will not be a one-time deal. Expect also Trish to have two or three fights in WWE. She looks great. I think she looks better than she ever did. She is in amazing shape. She does yoga. And she hasn't slacked at all in training and the looks department. She looks better than she ever did. But this is very interesting that WWE has Trish Stratus coming back for more than one match. Uh, and, and you can add this to a name... On the list of nostalgia acts that WWE is bringing in 
you know, going with that nostalgia trend. This is not a good way to go about business. It's good as far as a Band-Aid goes. But to have Trish come back for one match, two match, three match, you're taking spots away from the women that inevitably are doing the work day in and day out to build this evolution, to build this revolution. You know? What is Trish... What is Trish and, and and her coming back to the WWE going to going to do? Is she coming back to put talent over, or is she coming back to to come back and have the spotlight on her again and take it away from the younger talent? Now she probably don't intend to do that herself, but WWE, you never know what these fucking people look at what they've done with this entire evolution. They made it a fucking joke. All they want is a big name to sell tickets and to build hype. They don't have the true, genuine feel of of changing women's wrestling. They don't want to change women's wrestling. They continuously want to go back into the past and use the people of the past to try and get their agenda across. Meanwhile, WWE's failed to build new fucking superstars. They failed to give opportunities to, to, to those who've built this entire evolution. I don't like that at all. It's okay once. I'll let it slide twice. But once you're talking about one, two, three, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, this and that, it's time to step away. I don't want to see Trish Stratus on every major pay-per-view. I don't. Same goes for Lita. I've stated it since day one. Evolution should be about the genuine feel of where WWE started with this entire women's wrestling run. They brought women's wrestling back on an even playing field. The women could do it just as good as the men. What happened to that aspect? What happened to that aspect? What happened to the Iron Woman match that we had with Bailey and Sasha Banks? Why aren't we seeing stuff like that up front as a top priority? I don't get it. You know, I got people in the community arguing with me that it's a mainstream deal. There's no bigger match than Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey. I don't give a fuck. Ronda Rousey has nothing to do with the women's evolution. Ronda Rousey is a puppet. The only reason why WWE is using her is because she's the biggest female women's athlete in combat sports. And then they put the women's championship on her. Then people want to argue with me that Ronda Rousey isn't Brock Lesnar-like. Of course she is. Of course she is. You gave her a title that you're keeping away from everyone else. Nikki Bella has nothing to do with this evolution. She started nothing. She was the reason why the WWE changed their tune on the women's revolution. All because of AJ Lee. Yeah, Nikki Bella and Brie Bella. Two women who care more about Prada bags and Louis Vuitton dresses than actually caring about a revolution and an evolution being built up. They're at a point right now where they are trying so hard to fit in and what they represent is shunned upon and looked down upon with what really is this revolution. That's the truth behind it. It's ridiculous. I hate everything to do with this fucking revolution. I hate everything about it. Everything. Then I got people in the community arguing with me, well... Nikki Bella is a good antagonist for Ronda Rousey. It's wrestling one-on-one. It's wrestling booking one-on-one. Good heel versus good baby face. Who the fuck says that you need a good heel versus a good baby face in the main event of Evolution? Why not Asuka in that role? Why is Asuka not too mainstream enough for you? Is Asuka not pretty enough for you? Why is it because Asuka's not on a reality TV show? Because she doesn't speak English? which I'll talk about today. It's a joke. You have two women in the main event that have nothing to do with the evolution of women's wrestling in WWE. None. One's a puppet, and the other's a reality TV superstar. Nikki Bella has only used WWE as a foundation to further her career outside of WWE. When she gets bigger... In her life after WWE, WWE will be nothing but a footnote. And then along the way, she'll be represented as, oh, look at me, Nikki Bella. I started the women's evolution. Bullshit. Bullshit. 
It's all they're using the WWE for. This is all they're using this stage and this platform for. Now she's undeservedly in the main event. I want anybody to look me in the fucking eye and tell me that a Bailey versus Sasha Banks main event, if you take NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 1 and you put that in the main event of WWE Evolution, that that wouldn't get over? Are you fucking kidding me? No, instead we go, we go back and we harp, harp on and we, and we look back at what was. Instead of building on what was, we go backwards. Instead of going forward in this evolution and really living up, living up to the term of evolution, we're going backwards. We're not moving into a women's evolution. We're going back into the Divas era. It's horrible. I don't know how anybody could be excited about this shit. Oscar and Ember Moon. I take over Brooklyn 3. There's not been one women's match since that night that's even come close to that. I have held that match in higher regard than any other women's match that I've seen since then. And that wasn't too that wasn't uh, a heel and a babyface dynamic. That was a babyface Ember Moon and a babyface Oscar. What was wrong with that match? Did you complain about Simple wrestling one-on-one, simple wrestling logistics back then? Or did you enjoy the fucking match for what it was? Did the match give you a true interpretation of women's wrestling? Of course it did. Did they blow away everything else on that show? They pretty damn well near came close to it. Fuck you, man. Women's wrestling is a fucking joke. And I wish everybody would open their eyes... To what's going on? TMZ, mainstream, ESPN. ESPN coverage. Ronda Rousey is upset at the disrespectful act of the Bella Twins. It's all WWE cares for. Meanwhile, Sasha, Ruby, Amber, Asuka, Naomi, everybody else. Getting thrown to the fucking wayside. For what? For mainstream garbage. <sighs> Tired of ranting about it, man. And I feel like it's not going to end until we get done with this bullshit on October 28th. WWE has future plans. Listen to this. WWE has future plans for Trish Stratus and Lita as a tag team. (laughs) I mean, you have have all these women on the roster and WWE is now wanting to utilize Lita and Trish Stratus as a tag team in WWE. And that would only be for one reason and one reason only, and because that is, Stephanie McMahon is going to introduce tag team titles at Evolution. That's what she's going to do. Stephanie McMahon is going to have a role at Evolution, and she's going to introduce tag team titles. And when that happens, I don't know. Maybe it's Survivor Series. WWE is obviously moving away from the Survivor Series aspect of Raw versus SmackDown. Maybe we get Trish Stratus and Lita put in a tournament, and they end up being the ones who win the tag team titles first and foremost, and are crowned the first ever women's tag team champions in WWE. Because instead of giving it to somebody like a Sasha and Bayley, who clearly they don't give a shit about, let's put them on the Hall of Famers to get more mainstream attention. Because who the fuck is Sasha and Bayley? WWE promoted Trish Stratus and Alexa Bliss for WWE Evolution, but then they changed their minds on that match. I told you why. While the reason is still a controversial topic, Apparently, WWE has more in mind for one of those teams. Lita and Trish are best friends in real life, so their teaming up with each other is a natural fit. After all, they were the first women to main event Raw in a singles match, and they did it together. Now they get to march into Evolution, which is the first ever all-female WWE pay-per-view. Mike Johnson noted on PW Insider Elite Audio that a big backstage reason WWE went with this match is that WWE has more plans for Lita and Trish Stratus as a tag team in 2018. So we went from Alexa being hurt to Dave Meltzer pretty much stating that the reason why the match was changed was because it was the plan all along. And now Mike Johnson is stating... So you got three different opinions here with three different explanations. Mike Johnson now explaining that there's plans for Lita and Trish. That's why they were put together as a tag team. 
furthering plans for a tag team between these two women. He says, and I quote, I was told the decision was made about two weeks ago to turn that into a tag team, and part of it is that they want the Trish and Lita to be a tag team going forward. They have for them coming out of this, uh, them appearing on major shows as a tag team. End quote. Of course, one of the primary reasons why the decision was made had to do with the fact that Alexa Bliss is quote-unquote hurt so they can protect her in this tag team match. This was noted as well that Bliss being injured and WWE's plans for Trish and Lita seemed to make this match change, and that made the most sense. So if you if you really like Trish and Lita, then you might really enjoy what WWE has in store for fans, because apparently there is going to be much more even after WWE Evolution is said and done. Now, if WWE really does put the tag team titles on a team like Trish and Lita, the only way that would make sense is if you're legitimately going to put over another pair of women and you're going to solidify them as the next big thing. It's got to be a passing of the torch moment. If you're going to give Lita and Trish the tag team titles as the first ever women's tag team champions, then I'm okay with it if you're going to put over a team like Bayley and Sasha and you're going to have a passing of the torch moment to them, signifying that these ladies, these women, are what we need moving forward in the evolution of women's wrestling. That's the only way that I'm going to be okay with it. But WWE, the reason why they're doing it is because they want a spotlight on the women and they don't trust. They don't trust the talent that they have on the roster right now at all. And it's a sad fucking thing to see. It really is. And I mention that because there is a report That Vince McMahon doesn't trust his superstars enough to make new legends or enough to create new legends. WWE is gearing up for Crown Jewel, which we don't know if it's going to be on or off. We don't know yet. But Crown Jewel is being built and it's being booked by the Prince of Saudi Arabia. A lot of legends will be featured on this show. There's a reason why WWE keeps the legends around because... It's all about trust. They are already an established name with the audience. Dave Scherer noted on PW Insider Elite Audio that WWE isn't creating new stars and instead they're bringing back names of the past in order to sell tickets. How well is that working out for them? Is Evolution sold out? Is Monday Night Raw increasing its ratings by bringing back Attitude Era stars and filling the entire three hours of their show with that? No. The ratings seen a 2% increase on Monday night. If that's all Lita, Trish, Triple H, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle can muster up, I deem that a failure. And I hope it continues to sink lower and lower because that's the only way we're going to get to them. The problem was mentioned that WWE hadn't created new superstars on a huge level over the years and instead relied on names from the past. But apparently Vince McMahon is of this mindset for a very interesting reason. And Dave Scherer says, and I quote, it's not a great situation to be in when you're so dependent on older guys because you've done such a poor job with the younger talent. People are like, why does Vince do that? And it's so bizarre too because he did it because Brock burned him, right? He invested in Brock Lesnar and then he decided that he didn't want to be here anymore. He went to football. So he made Cena because he trusts Cena, but he made Cena at the expense of everybody else. So he kind of did this thing where he's trying to figure out and avoid a situation by giving somebody too much power. Now, luckily for you, Cena didn't abuse that power too badly. He did it to a degree by not saying, Vince, we should really elevate other guys. But for the most part, he was a good soldier that did what Vince wanted. End quote. It was also said that Vince McMahon turned around and made Brock Lesnar into what he was before uh, to a larger degree by giving him a schedule and unbeatable mystique. In fact, he made Lesnar even more powerful. Then the talent well dried up. Maybe Vince McMahon will learn someday. Maybe he will just keep going and hopes things turn out for the best. I don't even know where to begin with this, man. You know, you could see it up and down Monday Night Raw. I mean, anybody doing what I do can see why they do it. And it's because they don't trust the current crop of talent. It also goes to WWE not knowing how to book, produce, and write a television show. It's their own fault. They have nobody to blame but themselves. 
They might have the next John Cena. They might have the next Hulk Hogan. They might have the next Rock or Stone Cold. We don't know. Everybody is so micromanaged in that company. Everybody is so produced. Everybody is walking on eggshells. You don't know who shines and who doesn't. People are afraid to speak up. People, they take the ball, they run with it, and they're not noticed because of political fucking politics. Political bullshit. Roman Reigns is a clear example. I mentioned this on Monday Night Raw Review in a scathing rant. Is Roman Reigns more over to you now that he's the Universal Champion? The fact that Vince McMahon himself tried to get him over. Dwayne Johnson, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, and several others that I'm sure I'm leaving out. Every Triple H, Undertaker, main event after main event after main event at WrestleMania. Is he more of a superstar now to you that he finally beat Brock Lesnar, finally became the Universal Champion? Is he more of a superstar now in your eyes than he was before all this shit started happening? The answer is no. Roman Reigns is as boring as ever. He's as boring as ever. And why are the ratings sinking lower and lower every week? Maybe you should fucking start at the top. It starts at the top. WWE is quick to judge the, you know anybody else at the top. If this was SmackDown Live and AJ Styles was the champion, AJ Styles would be thrown under the bus. Take the title off of him. Take the title off of him. Put it on somebody that we like. Put it on somebody that's being pushed by management. Well, because it's Roman Reigns, people are turning the other cheek and they won't take the title off of him because he's a fucking pet project of Vince McMahon. Start at the top. What happened with Jinder Mahal? They put the title on Jinder Mahal on SmackDown Live. He fucking single-handedly killed SmackDown Live. Why? Because you knew the shows were fucking suffering. You took the title off of him. When is going to be enough is enough with Roman Reigns? He's not more of a superstar now. In fact, he still doesn't give you the aura of a superstar. He doesn't pick, he doesn't have you pick up the remote control and say, I'm going to watch Monday Night Raw this week. Or I'm going to be excited to watch Monday Night Raw this week. There's nobody on the roster that gives you that feeling. They might have that in Seth Rollins. They might have that in a Kevin Owens. They might have that, you know, in a Daniel Bryan. We don't know. AJ Styles, I love AJ Styles to death, but I know that he's not the, the figure that they want there. He's not going to put asses in seats like, like they want. You know? This is WWE's fault. This is WWE not giving opportunity because they don't know how to write. And then when they don't know how to write and the talent takes what they're given and they don't produce, it's the talent's fault. Sasha Banks, Bailey, Ember Moon, Ruby Riot, all those women, Asuka. WWE has the greatest roster assembled Right now in wrestling. What have they done with everybody? They've wasted them away. You've micromanaged, you overproduced to a point where there's just so much going on and you're afraid to give people an opportunity because you're stuck in the past. You're not going to rely on Trish and Lita. You're not going to rely on Dwayne Johnson and Brock Lesnar and everybody else that you want to bring back for a quick payday. How much longer is Shawn Michaels going to be able to go? How much longer is The Undertaker going to be able to go? How much longer is Triple H going to be able to go? What are you going to do when they're not there? You're going to look like a fucking homeless bum on the street with your pockets hanging out, empty, begging for spare change. You're going to be begging for talent and they're not going to be able to produce for you. They're going to be too old. They won't be able to go anymore. Meanwhile, looking back at you, is everybody else on your roster asking for a handout? What about me? What about the Seth Rollins? What about the Kevin Owens? What about everybody, the Dolph Zigglers, the Drew McIntyres, the Braun Strowmans? Everybody. The Sashas, the Baileys. They're not, they're not able to speak up. What do you think these people, what do you think these talents are thinking when they're, when they're watching Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker in the fucking main event of, of a 70,000 seat stadium show? What do you think they're watching when they're seeing Brock Lesnar in the main event of fucking WrestleMania? What do you think they're listening 
What do you think they're, what do you think they're thinking when, when, they're, when they're reading and listening to the rumors of Dwayne Johnson coming back and winning the Royal Rumble and main eventing WrestleMania? They don't want to be in that spot? You mean to tell me if you're a Seth Rollins, you're not thinking, what about me? Why ain't, why ain't I getting that opportunity? What do they got that I don't? They had an opportunity. They had people that actually fucking cared who wrote for them. It's a disgusting, vicious cycle that we're in. And it's going to be too late. When these guys can't go anymore, the guys now, if they if you don't care about them now, you will never care about them. And who's to say they even they, they may even still be here? They may get so fucking frustrated that they may end up leaving and going somewhere else. Sasha Banks is a fucking clear example. The woman, all she wants to do is wrestle. The woman outwardly comes out and says, I want to be the best women's wrestler of all time. Now, if I'm looking at Sasha Banks and, and I see that emotion coming from someone like Sasha Banks, if I'm a boss and I'm looking for a, a new employee, to hire a new employee, and she tells me I want to be the best of all time, are you gonna are you gonna look at Sasha Banks and that mentality and that attitude and say, well, you're not fit for my team? Sasha Banks wants to be with the WWE. She wants to be the best women's wrestler of all time. Has WWE given her the opportunity to be the best women's wrestler of all time? No, they haven't. They gave her one opportunity, one moment, in the, one moment in the sun that they don't really build upon, and they suppress her because she's out outspoken. Sasha Banks hasn't been given an opportunity because WWE wants to push people that they're, I guess, that are more in favor of the of the management. Sasha Banks is not a favorite of management. How could you be the best of all time if WWE doesn't give you the chance to be the, be- the, the best of all time? All the woman wants to do is wrestle. If I'm Sasha Banks, I'm not re-signing with the WWE. Knowing the current direction of the company and the bullshit that they're doing, politics... Saudi Arabia, deals abroad that are fucking gaining mainstream attention for all the wrong reasons. Going into countries where women aren't allowed to wrestle. Where did WWE recently go that they allowed wrestling for the first time with the females? It was Sasha and Alexa. I don't remember where it was. India? I don't remember where it was. Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss have a dislike for one another genuinely outside the ring. They put those differences aside to actually wrestle in a country and make history together knowing that they don't like each other. And after the fact, they were so emotional that all they wanted to do was bring spotlight to women's wrestling. This was a huge moment in their life, never mind their fucking career. That's what Sasha Banks wants to do. She wants to be a part of those moments and WWE is not allowing her to be a part of these moments. If I'm Sasha Banks and I'm hearing Vince McMahon doesn't trust his superstars enough to nurture them, build, and create new legends out of the current crop of talent, I'm taking my talent elsewhere. You don't know what you have until you've lost it. You mean to tell me Sasha Banks wouldn't thrive in Impact Wrestling? Sasha Banks on the indies would make more money than she ever will in WWE. Sasha Banks would be an absolute fucking legend, carving her own path, blazing her own trail on the indies. You mean to tell me if she went to Impact Wrestling, a bunch of Sasha's fans wouldn't follow Impact Wrestling? Or follow her to Impact Wrestling? Vince McMahon's a fucking idiot. Vince McMahon is demented, stuck in his own mind. He needs to get out of this mentality that dipping into the nostalgia cookie jar is going to be beneficial for him. It may be lining his pockets now. It may be filling these seats in these big stadium shows. How long is that going to last? He doesn't know how damaging it is to morale in that company. I remember an interview where they asked Sami Zayn, how do they feel about these part-timers coming back and main eventing WrestleMania? He gave the political answer of, well, with these guys coming back, you know, it's going to make all of us more money. 
That is such a crock of shit answer if I've ever seen one. Having these guys come back in main event is good for the entire company and it's good for us because we're getting more money in the end. It's filling our pockets. The more money that the company makes with these guys there, the more money we make. What type of answer is that? That's such a political fucking answer, it makes me fucking sick. You don't want to be the one that people come to see? You don't want to be given an opportunity to be made into a superstar, a legend? Have your name on the marquee? Have people pay a ticket to come see you wrestle? No, but you want someone else to take your spotlight while you sit complacent with your position in the company. This is what Vince has created. Vince has created complacency. He's created such a, a fucking minuscule level of content that no one will speak up. So Vince reverts back to what he knows best. Let me call Taker. Let me call my son-in-law. Let me call Trish. Let me call Lita. And then put them against my favorites and fuck everybody else. I want to know what AJ Styles is legitimately thinking when the WWE Champion is on in the middle of the show before the Cruiserweight Championship match at a major WWE show in front of 70,000 people. Now, if you ask me, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe could have easily main evented that show, but they didn't. They didn't. But what is Samoa Joe and AJ Styles thinking? Knowing that they're in the WWE title match and the main event is between four guys spanning over the age of 200 years. You think that sits well with them? Do you think AJ goes home to his wife and says, Honey, I'm busting my ass, and the WWE Championship that I'm wearing proudly around my waist is not in the main event. It's being pushed to the side for Agent Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, and Kane. That's a shitty fucking feeling. And I know for a fact in here, AJ Styles is feeling that way. Everybody in his position, Rollins, Ambrose, everybody, is feeling the same fucking way. complete garbage man this company is so fucked up they are so fucked up it is absolutely ridiculous moving on man more NXT names and a possible new match for Evolution it was reported earlier this week that Bianca Belair love Bianca Belair Io Shirai Jessamyn Duke Candice LeRae Dakota Kai and Marina Shafir will all be at the upcoming Evolution event in an update by PW Insider reports that Lacey Evans, Mia Yim, Rhea Ripley, and Casey Catanzaro are other talents scheduled for the show. As of this report, it's not known exactly their roles, but they will be there. It's being speculated that WWE may hold some sort of battle royal on the card. WWE Evolution is going to be full of women, and they also need a full-length pay-per-view, so there could be a lot of pairings. Needless to say, WWE needs to get to work on making some of these matches and filling out the match cards. Now, I don't know who would be interested in this whatsoever, and this is far, the farthest thing from a fucking evolution. This is, this is just a miscast opportunity here by WWE. An interesting match took place on Raw this week between Nia Jax and Ember Moon, which saw Moon defeating Nia Jax via countout. After the match was over, Jax embraced Moon, and they celebrated together like she was proud of her. Mike Johnson noted on PW Insider Elite Audio that it seemed like Nia Jax and Ember Moon could be a match coming... At Evolution, if they, elect, if they allow and let the feud to continue to grow. He says, I'm assuming they're going to build towards a Larry Zbysko, Bruno San Martino thing here. <laughs> Laughable that, that you're either comparing, even comparing those two names to a Nia Jackson and Ember Moon, even though I love Ember. Where Nia turns on her and it sets up a match at Evolution. Well, they don't have much time. So we'll see what happens. I just don't want them to set up Ember's Robin to Nia's Batman where Ember is sort of secondary. End quote. Only time will tell what WWE does, but they need to stack a card and they need to fill out a card. And to some, I don't know who, maybe if you're fucking pea-brained, Nia Jax versus Ember Mood could be a plausible addition to the event. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't see how anybody could remotely be interesting in that match whatsoever. I could think of a thousand different matches for, for Ember Moon. A- anybody. Anybody. And none of them include Nia Jax. After all, the two worked together on Raw. I neither have anything else going on creative-wise. So why not? 
It's WWE's mentality for everything. Eh, they got nothing to do. Even though the match is probably going to be shit, let's put them on. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Everything regarding NXT on this Evolution card is what you're going to need to see. Everything coming from NXT, NXT UK, Tony Storm, Io Shirai, this one, that one, everything that uh, Kyrie Sane, Shayna Baszler, everything that you see coming from NXT with an NXT name on it, that's the real evolution. And I hope everything from NXT blows everything on the main roster away. Then you will know who's doing it right, how it's presented, and who's doing it wrong, and how it's being misrepresented. That's my feeling going into evolution. Major update on Sasha Banks and her WWE status. Clearly, Sasha Banks has been absent from television. They ended the storyline with Bailey and Sasha Banks in hopes of turning one heel and reformed the friendship known as the Boss and Hug Connection. If Sasha is off TV, that is certainly a reason to be off TV and walk away. Run away. If anybody's going to pair me in a team called the Boss and Hug Connection, good luck. They even had t-shirts made for the pairing. Banks is not on television and is beginning a break from action in general. She has shown up at other events in the community to represent WWE, but her presence hasn't been felt on Raw in weeks. Barn Burner's No Holds Barred podcast reported this, and I quote, What's going on with Sasha Banks? Did Sasha pull a Shawn Michaels and take her ball and go home? I have heard. I can't confirm because the only person that can confirm this is Sasha. And I haven't talked to her. But I have heard that she just needed a break. A mental break. Whatever. She just needed a break. What does that mean? I don't know. How are the other ladies looking at it? I have no idea. But she needed a break. And that is all. End quote. Now, there have been a lot of rumors about Sasha Banks, and until something official comes out, then there's no use in reporting on it or making a clickbait video on YouTube. Barnburner has been a trusted source for the majority of this year. And at this point, with them having an established track record, it's safe to say that they aren't really going to misinform you. They're not going to misinform you. Banks just needed a break for a bit. That may be the case. Hopefully she will be able to come back soon and we will see her at Evolution. Now, Ryan Satin did report, this is as of Thursday, that Sasha Banks is out with a nagging back injury. It's not known how serious it is at the moment, but this rest was much needed. Now, it's been hard for anyone to get any additional information from WWE, including Satin, on Banks and her condition. But from sources within the WWE, they've been very guarded with this information. Hopefully she will be okay and back at Evolution. She was pulled from a recent MTV show. Banks has been promoted for house show on October 20th. And then again, those events can be changed at any given moment. Card subject to change. Meanwhile, if you go back to Sasha Banks' Instagram and you look at her stories, she's training at home with Mikaze doing... Squats or whatever. Training. Just training at home. Activities that force her to use her back. She ain't hurt. If she was hurt, she wouldn't be working out. Maybe it is that she just walked away for a mental clearing. She needed to walk away to clear her mind. There's a lot going on. Maybe she really is against the Saudi Arabian deal. Maybe she voiced her opinion. Maybe WWE suspended her without actually coming out and saying that we suspended Sasha Banks. Because that would cause a shitstorm. People would want to know why. People would cause fucking mass chaos on social media with someone like Sasha Banks. You know? We don't know. We don't know. It's all speculative right now. I've heard everything from her being pregnant, her getting an abortion. We don't know. Maybe Sasha Banks really did speak up about WWE going to Saudi Arabia and someone in the back of high management said, fuck this woman, we're going to take her off TV for a little bit and we're going to do what we need to do as far as business goes without her. Ronda and Nikki is going to take the primary spot in the women on Monday Night Raw. We got uh, Charlotte and 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 Becky on SmackDown Live. 
They don't need Sasha Banks right now. Even though we all know that something's not right with Sasha not being there. And the fact that she's such a prominent name in the evolution, why she isn't on TV, why she doesn't have a match. Don't trust the WWE. They're going to give you some bullshit reason. Meanwhile, that's not the real reason. It's a cover-up for the real reason. Who knows? But it's not out of the realm of possibility that Sasha Banks spoke out of turn or said something about the Saudi Arabian deal and WWE's involvement with them when all she wants to do is wrestle and WWE's going into a country where they don't allow women to wrestle. Who knows? All I know is Sasha Banks is not hurt and she's out for a clear political reason, which is fucked up. And it's WWE's loss. <laughs> Sasha Banks is the best female wrestler on Monday Night Raw. No one's going to tell me otherwise. It's their loss that they don't have Sasha Banks. And if Sasha Banks is not on Evolution, fuck WWE. Seriously. The card is a lot worse without her there. Stephanie McMahon, speaking of Evolution. Stephanie McMahon and her possible role at WWE Evolution. I mentioned this during my rant about Trish and Lita. WWE Evolution is going to be a historic night no matter what happens. First female pay-per-view in WWE. The big mainstream attention that it's going to get. Barnburner's No Holds Barred podcast reports that McMahon's role for Evolution won't only be impactful, but the current plan is that they're going to do everything they can to make sure that her segment is historic as well. I mean, what is she going to do? She's going to come out and say that she started the women's revolution? It's going to be more pandering and sucking up to Stephen McMahon, the, the leader of the new evolution for women's wrestling? Stephen McMahon will be appearing at Evolution I have heard they said that Stephanie will have a major segment on the pay-per-view. Stephanie will be a part of history in making tag team champions in the women's division. Again, this could change, but from what I hear, Stephanie will be a big part of debuting the tag team titles for the women at Evolution. It's been a long time coming to have women's tag team titles in WWE. After all, women like Becky Lynch have been suggesting it for a while. The question remains how WWE would do it with their separate rosters, but it's certainly an intriguing idea that's getting some fans excited. I'm not excited for it unless it's done the right way. There's no way you can have separate titles on both brands. It's got to be between all the brands. You want NXT UK involved? Great. NXT? Great. SmackDown? Great. Everybody's got to get a chance. Everybody. And even that, I don't know how well it's going to work out. How are we going to go about crowning new tag team championships? Are they going to be put on the line in a match at Evolution? Are we going to see Alexa and Mickey versus Trish and Lita for the tag team titles? We don't know. We don't know. Is there going to be a fatal four-way? Fatal four-way match to crown new tag team champions. Are they going to be... Or, 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 or is there going to be a tournament for the, for the titles? Are we going to have eight teams assembled in a tag team title tournament? We don't know. That could be a reason why... Trish and Lita are back, and they're going to be paired on several other shows after Evolution. We don't know. I would hold a tournament. I would carefully assemble teams that make sense. The Bella Twins, the Iconics, Trish and Lita, Mickey and Alexa, Sasha and Bailey, maybe Ruby and Sarah Logan, or Ruby and Liv Morgan, you know? Maybe Naomi and Asuka being that they paired them together. I don't fucking know. I don't know. it has got to be a reason why they just somehow were just paired together. Maybe it's because of the tag team titles coming. I don't know. Maybe we get some teams assembled in NXT. I don't know. Figure it out there. Maybe we get Jessamine Duke and Maria Shafir. As a tag team. Maybe they are placed in a tournament. It's an interesting thing to think about. It's got to be done right, obviously. I don't want it to be some half-assed bullshit where you're going to introduce tag team titles and it's going to be and it's gonna be fucking worthless right out of the gate. They got to span all four shows. If not, then you're already at a loss. I don't want to hear about it. But they're coming. I know they're coming. People I know have seen the designs of the belt. They are coming. 
And if WWE wants to make Evolution the first Evolution pay-per-view in what will be many, important, and historic, then something like this is going to happen. So if Stephanie's going to be on the show, that is what she's going to be doing. She's going to be introducing the tag team titles in WWE for the women's division. We're going to end with this one, man. This one's going to have a lot of people's heads rolling. Asuka. We all know that her lack of a push on SmackDown Live is just completely out of this mind retarded. Asuka's lack of English is reportedly costing her a push. Asuka came into the WWE onto the main roster with a rocket strap attached to her robe. Undefeated NXT champion. She gave up the NXT title. Nobody ever beat her for it. She was undefeated when she made her main roster debut. Streak ended at WrestleMania when it should not have ended. And it seems that she's slowly plummeting back down the ranks. Nobody knew why. Some have wondered if Asuka had some sort of backstage heat on her. But sadly, that might not be the case at all because the real reason Asuka isn't getting pushed could be something completely different. Asuka has had an amazing, amazing career in WWE in NXT. Can't say the same on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live. She hasn't been on television consistently. She was fed to Charlotte. Because God forbid Charlotte loses to Asuka at WrestleMania. The undefeated streak broken way too soon. And no, Asuka was not handcuffing an entire division because she was undefeated. Then she got fed to Carmella. Some good that did. So you waste Asuka's undefeated streak on Charlotte, who then sat out for two months to fix leaky breasts all while Carmella was running around during her reign of terror. Was it worth it? Now Carmella's dancing with R-Truth in something that doesn't even make sense on week-to-week television. She goes from badass heel, cocky heel, to now the dancing fool who somehow turned babyface with no explanation. I'm glad Oscar Shriek was worth it to WWE. She has not been used consistently on television. She's been used to put over the Iconics and is the longest reigning NXT champion. Mike Johnson noted on PW Insider Elite Audio that he doesn't know if there's heat on Asuka as much as there just isn't anything creative for her to do right now, to which Dave Scherer replied, Oh, there's tons of heat on her right now. There's tons of heat on her right now. She doesn't speak good English. I mean, say what you want, but that's the bottom line. If she spoke good English, I think she would be getting more of a push. He, and in this instance, he is Vince McMahon, wants you to, a- wants you to be able to cut promos. Vince McMahon, who has an idea of who he wants to push, and what they need to be able to do for him. Only time, time will tell if Asuka can turn things around or not, but it might be hard convincing Vince McMahon otherwise, unless she can really improve on her English language skills and promo abilities. So the reason why Asuka isn't being pushed is because she doesn't speak fluid or fluent English. That's the reason. That is the reason you're giving me. So Triple H, this is where there's a disconnect with Triple H and Vince McMahon. Triple H, in two years, didn't find this to be an issue at all, and he pushed her at the most dominant female run NXT has ever seen, the most dominant female run that WWE has ever seen, surpassing Goldberg and using Goldberg's undefeated streak as a catalyst in building Asuka up. Undefeated NXT champion, held that title longer than anybody, made the main roster still undefeated, and WWE continued to push her as undefeated until WrestleMania. This is where the disconnect is. Triple H found that to be very important. But now, all of a sudden, Vince McMahon is finding an issue that Asuka doesn't speak English. You didn't know that? While Triple H was nurturing her and caring for her and building her and pushing her, you didn't know that? You didn't know that Asuka didn't speak English. When you made the call to Triple H, I want Asuka. Vince called for Asuka Well before she made her main roster debut and Triple H said no. Vince knew Asuka didn't speak good English. 
Now, all of a sudden, this is the reason why she's getting a lack of a push. The reason why she's having her background and and her language and her being Japanese be made fun of on SmackDown Live in segments with Naomi. That's why Asuka cunt came out dancing like a fucking clown at Super Showdown. This is the best that you have for Asuka. So Vince McMahon is signing his name to the paychecks to go out and get international talent. So what does that mean for Kyrie Sane? What does that mean for Io Shirai? Are they to be in NXT for the rest of their lives? At this point, that would probably be the best decision. Until Vince McMahon has croaked and gone. When he is no longer there is when it will be safe to go to the main roster. That is the most ridiculous reason to not push anybody. And I guess that's the same for Nakamura. That is the same for Nakamura. Yeah, he's the United States champion, but what did he do in his feud with AJ Styles? And for all the people that said, well, Vince McMahon is hands-on with Nakamura. Vince McMahon changed Nakamura's theme song because he knew that he needed to get over as a heel and he worked with Nakamura closely. But did he really work with Nakamura? Does he care for Nakamura like he cares for anybody else? The answer is no. Nakamura was ruined, was ruined in 2017 when he failed to beat Jinder Mahal. Not once, but twice. Nakamura should have beat Jinder Mahal at Hell in a Cell. Nakamura should have been a babyface WWE champion. WWE put him in a feud with AJ Styles and it ruined Nakamura on SmackDown Live the entirety of this year because he didn't win one single... He won a match, but he didn't win the fucking title out of six fucking matches. Six matches. They made event at every pay-per-view at World Walt headlined the WWE title match every single pay-per-view up until Money in the Bank. And he didn't win not one major match for the title. So was Vince McMahon really for Nakamura? Or was it because Nakamura didn't speak English well enough to be a WWE champion? I don't understand that. So let me zing Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is a terrible promo. What the fuck is he doing as WWE champion? John Cena embarrassed him beyond belief in the build to their match at No Mercy. So why is he the universal champion? Roman Reigns can't cut, a, can't cut a fucking promo or a believable promo. He can't invest me in what he's saying. So why is he the universal champion? Asuka not speaking English is the reason for her push being erased. So why would you want Io Shirai and, and Kyrie Sane on the main roster? Do you know how ridiculous it sounds when Michael Cole is building Io Shirai up on Mae Young Classic during the tournament as WWE's biggest female signing of all time? How they're building Io Shirai up as the greatest female performer in the world. What difference does it does it make if Michael Cole is saying that? If Vince McMahon doesn't see it because she doesn't speak English too well, which she doesn't, which she doesn't speak that bad of the English language. She speaks it pretty fucking well. Her mother is a fucking English teacher. So what good is it if Michael Cole is saying these things, but Vince McMahon doesn't give a fuck? Do you know what it really is? And I don't want to come off sounding like a racist. But Vince McMahon looks at them and he sees what nationality they are and he sees that they're not American and he deems them, well, she ain't going anywhere. I'll push her to an extent, but she ain't gonna be what everybody expects her to be because I say so. Because she doesn't speak English. Because she looks different. She has a different skin color. So what does that mean for Kyrie saying? WWE could brag about how Kyrie Sane won the Mae Young Classic and how the Mae Young Classic has done wonders for Kyrie Sane's career. Look at her in NXT. She's the NXT Women's Champion. What good is it? What good is it? If when you make the main roster and you are looked at under a fucking microscope by this 73-year-old fucking demented fuck, he deems you, you don't look the way I want you to, you don't sound the way I want you to, Eh. So we're going to ruin everything that NXT did and say, fuck it, as if it never happened. 
Why is NXT even there? Why are the men and women of NXT working so hard? Why is Triple H and his team working so hard to build up credible fucking women and men that could possibly be the next big thing on the main roster and Vince McMahon kills literally 75% of what comes out of NXT? Why? Yet we're here complaining and we're reporting that Vince McMahon doesn't trust anybody on the main roster to build future legends. They're not given the opportunity. And when it comes down to their race and their background and their ethnicity, that's why Vince McMahon won't push anybody. That's why Vince McMahon doesn't trust anybody. What was wrong with Asuka to begin with? I don't understand it. She needs to cut a promo. She's not the type of individual or woman that WWE wants in, 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 the, in the main event or in the, in the spotlight. She's not going to get ESPN or Sports Illustrated coverage. She's not going to get TMZ coverage. Now, I understand you're an entertainment company, but you are shitting on everything, not only NXT does, but everything that this women's evolution is. Everybody deserves an opportunity. Everybody's going to get an opportunity in WWE. What opportunity is there if you're not of a certain look to Vince McMahon? Yet everybody's like, oh, I can't wait for Io Shirai to make the main roster. Oh, I can't wait for Kyrie Sane to make the main roster. I can't wait for the Bullet Club to come in from New Japan. I can't wait for Kenny and, and Cody and the Young Bucks to come into WWE. Are you kidding me? If he didn't create you, if Vince McMahon, he thinks he's God. If he didn't create you in his own image, you're done. Doesn't matter what his son-in-law, doesn't matter what his daughter thinks. If Vince McMahon didn't create you in his own image, you have already lost the battle. Triple H is doing everything he can to build the future, and Vince McMahon, one by one, piece by piece, block by block, killing everything that Triple H is doing in NXT. Asuka was perfect coming out of NXT. They had to change nothing about Asuka coming out from NXT. Based on her, her language and her race and her ethnicity. Done. Done. So what is Asuka telling her friends who are in the wrestling industry of the same background and eth ethnicity as her? Don't come. Don't come. Is that why Peyton Royce and Billy Kay aren't getting pushed? Is that why they're treated like a fucking joke and an afterthought on SmackDown Live? Is that, is that the reason why Becky Lynch was miscast and mistreated for two years? Because of her accent? It's the reason why Naomi is not in a spotlight when she is one of the better female performers on the main roster. Is it because is it because she is black? Is it the color of her skin? What about Ember Moon? What about Ember Moon? Is the reason why Ember Moon is not being pushed? Is it because the color of her skin? Asuka didn't need any tweaking. WWE missed the boat on Asuka. Vince missed the boat on Asuka. Japanese killer. Speaking Japanese in a harsh, violent tone is the Oscar that we needed to see bring legitimacy to this main roster. They killed it. You put a microphone in this woman's hand and then you gave yourself the interpretation of, well, she isn't what we're looking for. I don't know what anybody ever saw on her. She can't cut a promo. She can't speak English. Let's dump her. I cringe at the fact, not only at Kyrie, not only for EO, but for Velveteen Dream, for the Undisputed Era, for Keith Lee, for Matt Riddle, and everybody fucking else, for Champa, for Gargano, I fear for the entirety of NXT's roster right now. I fear for everyone. That is the best roster that NXT has ever produced. Legitimately, logically, realistically, how many of them are going to make NXT and be a true superstar? Zero. That will not happen until Vince McMahon is dead. The guy is stuck in his own bubble. And the company will not grow. They're making all these types of money. Fine. Whatever. I'm not using that as a foundation for how successful WWE is. They may be making all this money. Vince McMahon may be a great businessman. But his managing talent and a mindset for what is needed on this product on TV week by week, as far as talent goes, 
The guy has shot his load. This isn't Vince McMahon of the Attitude Era anymore being challenged by WCW every fucking week. This is Vince McMahon who's lost his fucking mind, who doesn't give a shit about this business, and only cares about lining his pockets with more money, more money, more money. Fuck everything that he's doing with NXT. And fuck the future of this company. And fuck everybody that wants to make a name in his company. It won't happen unless, like I said, you are created in his own image. And if you think that's a way to look at it and you think that's a right way to go about it, the company and the quality of the shows will continue to suffer and suffer and suffer every single week. I'm getting out of here because my voice is suffering. Thank you guys so much for everything, man. A lot of news with more to come right here on the podcast, man. we got a lot more to go over for Saturday as well. So stick with me. This has been Off The Script, episode 243. This is part number one. To start your Fridays off, I'll see you right back here on part two. Remember, show some love to my sponsors, man. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Harry's.com slash script. Make sure you guys use our unique link for Harry's, man. Harry's.com slash script. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And LootCrate.com slash JD from NY. Make sure you guys type that code in. 25% off your first subscription for Loot Crate WWE Slam Day. Thank you to everybody, man. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. And I'll see you guys on Saturday with more news and rooms right here on Off the Script. I'll talk to you later.